Killing the Company. My name's Kellen. We're doing part two here of uh, my little series on the decade of death metal from 2000 to 2010. Got another group of CDs here for you. Let me turn this up for one second. There we go. Okay. So by the way, while I'm doing this, if um, you've got like some gems, hidden favorite 2000 to 2010 death metal uh, albums that you would like to recommend, EPs, demos, whatever, um, I'm just doing full lengths for this series, but if you've got something you would like to recommend that um, you love, you feel are underrepresented in a decade of death metal that gets too much disrespect, please send them my way. List them in the comments below. Um, be much appreciated because I kind of feel like this is a, a decade of death metal that I will, in the years to come, dive deeper and deeper into um, just because of how much it sort of means to me on a personal level. So. If you're like, what are we listening to in the background? Is this death metal? Yes, it is. Death metal from France. So, this is Solacan, the Great Divider. I don't even know where to start with this one. So, um, this band is like, checks off so many different boxes because got this like proggy melodic side to it the guitar tone you'll hear later on in the video because we'll be blasting through it during the course of all this is like really thick and muddy um, so it's and I don't know how to exactly place it um, but you know for all the talk about like 2000s death metal getting kind of clicky or overproduced I don't you know I understand like there's a reason for that but I'm not going to go and talk about those records most of those records got a lot of praise and recognition and for some reason I think because of their visibility gave the decade a, a bad rep I am here to change your mind about that decade of death metal. So, um, so like on the Great Divider, it's just like I was saying, it's got this melodic, progressive side to it, but most of it is just this chunky, you know, deep bellowing. At times, it gets a little bit more aggressive, but like, never to the point where I would call it um, brutal or technical. It does not walk those lines. Like, it's not, to me, it doesn't sort of splinter off from the suffocation vine. Um, but because it's so unique in personality, and I think France is a death metal scene um, in a lot of ways, doesn't get a lot of attention. So we don't have this well-codified way to interpret it. Um, and this record definitely benefits from it. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit more. Okay. Anyway, I will continue here. But um, 2000, so there's sort of competing information. I've seen this, it must be at like the, the sort of transition in the year. I've seen it like January 2004. Other people say it was a 2003 release um, off of Sacral Productions, um, but super cool. I mean, right? Like, what do you even? This album artwork here that still has got some 90s look to it, but it kind of looks technical, death metalish. Definitely doesn't look brutal. Uh, here we get a little bit of 
album CD artwork. Right? I don't know what's going on. We got some dogs chasing themselves here. I don't know. But, oh man, like, there's like some really sprawling songs on this album. You know, that like push packs the six, uh, six minute mark. So, you can see conceptually, um, this is a band with like bigger ideas at work. Start us off, and we're doing this in chronological order. So, um, anyway, next record here. Let me grab it for you as our cat walks by. Hold on. So, back to Brazil for this one. This is uh, Absolute Disgrace. Corpse Kingdom is the record there. Man, so if you think about what's going on, like in Brazil in 2004 in terms of death metal. Like, it is just, like that super intense, fast, almost like blasphemous death metal, kind of like uh, taking up the torch from where like, Angel Corpse left off. Um, but Corpse Kingdom <laughs> sounds like Okay, they're technical enough. I could definitely see them being called technical death metal. Um, so very much in opposition to what you think when you you know start to catalog Brazilian death metal from that era. But it's also like a kind of grindcore gore grind thing. Like to me, the the reference would be like inhaled. Um, but there's enough like turns on a dime to where you can hear the technical death metal um, pouring out of this. Um, but you know, in that sort of wash, you get a lot of the same sort of like grindcore vocals in terms of the highs and the lows. Um, a lot of the themes here could be you know equally share you know brutal death metal and, and gore grind. So. When it comes at you in full force, you get that grindcore influence, but um, it's always shifting through the gears. So technical death metal as well. But I think that's what I really would like you to take away from a record like this is just a, a, a Brazilian death metal band that's sort of going against the grain in their era. Um, this is on Comegolo or Cumelo. How many times do you think it will take for me to get this? Cogumelo? There we go, maybe that's it. Um, out of Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Um, they just put out one full length and I think had like an EP or demo before this, um, 2004. But, uh, really cool. Like, I mean, I would say if you're into technical death metal, once again, but you wanna stay away from all the clicky drums, check this one out. Corpse Kingdom. Absolute disgrace. Brazil. <laughs> German death metal. 
2004. This is Dying uh, by Anna Sarkin. Um What do you say about, like, I don't know, it's once again, like, it's in interesting for me to go back and think about this band because it was not on my radar, like, when I was getting into death metal in 2000, you know, they were, like, very much second tier, and I don't know if they deserve to be considered that, as much as, like, perhaps, you know, German death metal was not front and center in my consciousness, I was listening to more, you know, well-established scenes, but this was a monster of a record, um, like, so good, but, like, once again, like, it speaks to the... This production is sensational to me. And I think, you know, when I, as much as I love like the death metal scene today, like I miss records that sound like this. Like this is sensational. Um, and it's, you know, kicks out a much faster velocity. It's almost like when they slow it down here, it sounds like, um, you know, pestilence. Um, when they pick it up, it sounds like DSI or uh, more aggressive. Uh, I mean, even the pacing, you could call it this number, but it doesn't have like the, you know, Swedish tone here. It just, I don't know how to describe it other than like, this is, you know, if you were to throw a dart at 2000s death metal and we're looking to hit the bullseye in terms of what production standards should be, like this to me is dead center. Perfect. It's the bullseye. Um, so good. Like, potentially, if I, if I would, I don't know, I've got a whole lot of albums I'm going to be going through, but like, I will put this up against anything, you know, on, you know, Dark Descent, or Misako Unoho, or 20 Bucks Spin, or, like, the larger death metal records. This is, um, on Mighty Music, um, any of the, like, newer death metal records that have really defined the past decade, which are great. I have nothing bad, like, I own those records, I own them, you know, and I will buy them in the future. But, like, please, I, I, I miss this. I wish more bands, you know, put this at, like, as a high watermark achievement within the genre, as much as they do something like Left Hand Path. Like, I deserve it. I personally, like, if there's a bias that I have in death metal, it's because I think this deserves just as much attention. Um, this record is that good. <laughs> Anasarka Dying 2004. Um, there are other, I've got a couple other releases prior to this that are worth your time, but you know, given the time period that I'm talking about, this is the one that I wanted to highlight. My God, people, get right. Go and get yourself a copy of this record. Um, brilliant death metal. German death metal 2004. Okay. Moving on here to Blood Red Throne. The band is still around and kicking. Not many of these bands are, but um, to me, this is where I sort of I. I mean, I listened to Come Death, which came out in 2007, but Alter Genesis in 2005 is the one you need to pick up. Um, it still has so. For the first couple records, they had like circulating drummers, and apparently, this is a programmed drum release. Um, I don't know. I, it sounds to me like Steve Ashheim from um, DSI, in the sense that there's like a sterility, 
because that's, that's a word, right? It is sterile, sterile, um, to the drums, which I understand, like, if they are programmed, but it's more like they're just absolutely in the right spot, like, in terms of being on time, but also, uh, having, the, the, it, matches perfectly with the guitars. So to me, it still feels like a, a band that's completely in sync with one another as opposed to programmed drums. That's a side note for this record. Um, 2005, this is the first air, uh, earache release by this band. And um, the last record they had with Mr. Hustler, which I believe got his name from a, uh, I think it was a porn star? I don't know. Um, but anyway, why do you want this record? So this is a Norwegian death metal band that loves American death metal. Like, so the riffs here are just like a passion project in the same way that you could consider Bloodbath to be a passion project. So it's not groundbreaking work as much as it is like coming from people, I believe the two guitarists, Short and Dod, I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation, but um, they were uh, involved in the Norwegian black metal scene and they just sort of met and loved American death metal from the 90s, so they formed this band. Um, and the riffs are all coming from that, so like, you know, Monstrosity and Obituary and death and basically the Floridian death metal scene like it's here so nothing groundbreaking in that regard the bass Erlen Kasperson is uh, if I were to make a short list of like bassists that should be considered top within their generation Erlen Kasperson is to me what Steve DiGiorgio and uh, Alex Webster were in the generation before him. Um, the bass work here, there's a couple moments like on Ripsaw Resentment um, where he just splinters off and is doing this crazy tap work. There's like tons of slaps and, um, but it never gets like jazzy, you know? It's like in the same way that like Alex Webster is jazzy or Steve Giorgio are jazzy because they are like two steps ahead of what the rhythm, what the riffs are doing. It's, it's that kind of, you know, brilliant bass work. It's not like Sean Malone, who's very much taking like a jazz influence um, and incorporating that in the sound like uh, Agora or something like that. But one of my favorite God, I mean this is an earache release so it was a bit more like I don't want to say like low-hanging fruit but it was a bit more uh, accessible or um, I had more exposure to it in 2005 when it came out and I've listened to this probably 20 billion times um, I love it I, I keep I, I, pulling it off the shelf um, just because it is another like like the Anasarca it's got a little bit more of a modern like um, weight to it, um, and the Anasarca record sounds a little bit dry by comparison, but still super heavy. It's just, this is a grisly sort of, uh, Anas the Anasarca record dying is a bit more grisly in its texture. This here sounds a little bit more saturated, um, but still nonetheless, like, make records that sound like this, please. I am dying for them. Uh, that's, if I even say the name, Blood Red Throne, Altered Genesis. This is my second video in a row. I may be losing my mind little by little, but 
let's let's should we go on? We're, we're moving on. Okay, back to the states. Um, this is a relic uh, with heritage of abomination. So I believe they're from Illinois. Um, so American death metal that's sort of almost leaning into brutal death metal. Um, I feel like they took a page of what Oppressor did and then a page of like Hate Eternal. And that sense sounds like very much American death metal um, from the time period. Um, United Guttural Records. Um, but, you know, similar to Oppressor, I wanted to make a regional piece here, like... Illinois, I, I just feel like there are great sort of heritage of these like small bands they don't get tons of recognition because it's not a greater conversation about their contribution to the genre, but... Relic, um, this is an awesome uh, death metal record that's got some like interesting ideas in terms of um, guitar work. It, it, you know, in the same way like Oppressor, I, I kind of feel like if you, when you listen to them, um, there's a few moments on uh, Solstice of Oppression where you kind of like your head turns like, oh, that's an interesting little blip here. That's an interesting little turn they took. A relic, I feel like I have the same sort of inclination. It's, it's definitely a bit more straightforward and um, sounds, you know, 2005 versus 95, which I think that's when Soul of Oppression came out, but um, super cool, interesting release. If you think about it within the context of like 2000s, death metal sort of transitioning before we got brutal um, in the same way that like you could think about years before that resiliency and like rebellion it's just so punishing you kind of want to make it into a brutal death metal because there's not a lot of space to breathe um, this is also you know equally as dense but has like an American sound to it um, like Hate Eternal for example <laughs> probably have not heard this record. Hopefully you have, but if you haven't and you like this era, check out Relic. Shout out to Illinois. Moving on. Back to France. So we began with France, we we're finishing up with France, but this is totally different. So unlike this brooding little animal that's hanging out behind me, this is drowning. Um, and uh, they play, you know, like whatever mock speed um, death metal like vital remains angel corpse that kind of um, super fast death metal uh, just an absolute ripper of a record um, apocalypse unsealed is what it is called um, you know, and the, you can see they've got Morbid Angel and Deicide um, in the back here, hanging out, doing their thing. You know, once again, that could definitely be a 90s album artwork there. Um, Bones Brigade records. Um, this is just like violent, satanic death metal. From France, though. Look. Look at those gentlemen. They are not playing games there. They mean business. They are unsealing the apocalypse on this record. Um, I will, just as a side note, like, so many, the, the pace of this decade um, is probably something that um, is worth paying attention to because like, you're on the rise with like, larger, unique leader, for example. They're on the come up, and I think they are sort of um, painting 
what the threshold is for uh, death metal during this time period. Um, and you get so many bands who are just like willing to push the envelope, but none of the stuff that I'm pulling out here for you, just so you know, it's gonna keep you happy here. Um, this is much faster, a whole lot blastier. That's maybe a word, I don't know. Um, but like, I really dig Vital Remains. Um, and this is in that, in that world. Um, say here like there's you know, maybe the relic sounds like this I don't know but none of these bands are by any means identical um, you know the last video I did I think there was the abhorrence release is similar to that um, drowning um, that style of death metal but you know Brazil and France have their own thing going so uh, if you want to sort of expand your French death metal palette um, you got two here, this Solacom and Drowning. Check them out within a year of each other, but sound completely different in the same country. Don't generalize. Okay, I am exhausted. I have not done two videos like this in a row. I don't know how people do it. It's like hour long videos almost. I did two in a row, I'm gonna space these out. Um, and give you stuff to look at, but once again, like I mentioned at the beginning, if you do have any recommendations for me, um, please let me know. Uh, I'm going to keep on building this catalog because I kind of feel it's like going forward in this whole thing we got going here, this is going to be my, my little niche. There's so many other good death metal channels to check like new death metal that's coming out. You know, check out, um, let me see. Like, if, you, I, you're, if you're watching this, you're already subscribed to probably Ken's Death Metal Crypt. But, like, Mark G with the C, um, Liam over at the Death Dude Metal Pen, um, Melody Loves Death Metal, they're all doing this. You know, I feel like the crew that I get a chance to talk to most often, um, guys like Brian Arkham or uh, Rick over at the Dreadful Minutes, they're doing this. Metal Miners, they're doing this. All of that new death metal is coming out right now. Check them out. They're going to have you covered. they got all that information. You don't need one more place bringing that to you. What you do need is a little bit of this. You need a little bit of this. You need a little bit of this. That's what I'm here for. I'm done. I am I'm through. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know any cool death metal records from 2000 to 2010 that I have missed. I'll see you guys next time. For part three, we're gonna keep this going. Part three is next. All right, that's all.